What's going on, Simple Men's Comics family? Of course, you know, we here at the channel are all about amplifying your collection through integrity and community. And now that community extends to your mobile phone. Be sure to text 803-200-2720 to be included in that brand new Bolo Nation text community. Now today I sent out a text letting everybody know about Pulse 11 and Pulse 13 and their importance to Danielle Cage who is red hot on the back issue market. And if you were subscribed, you would have found out already. So be sure to subscribe, 803-200-2720. Lift my glasses to you guys, Simple Man's Comics family, because it is Friday night, and that can only mean it is time for Last Call, where we are covering our top 10 picks for Final Order Cutoff this coming Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. With me is my co-host, Jack DeMeo. What is going on? Oh, man, Brian, end of the week. You know, this is our favorite show. We get to talk a little bit of comics. We get to have our adult Kool-Aids. We get to unwind, and uh, it's been a big week this week, so this is definitely a much needed one. So it is a great week. For those that are new to this channel, Wednesday night we released our new 3 Up 3 Down where we have the three hot and cold market trends in comics. And then we followed that up the next night with the Bolo Show, which was just last night. And then after that, we had another small video, which was a back issue Bolo where we talked about five Green Lantern back issues that everyone should be on the hunt for because those are out there in those dollar bin boxes. And then also right now, we are talking final order cut off so we're wrapping the week up we have more content planned so be on the lookout for that and also make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell to get those notifications when that content hits the channel but enough about that let's get into the last call starting with our first pick this week and we are talking captain marvel number 13 this is gonna have a couple covers for it you have that regular mark brooks cover there's a chris anka 2020 variant there's an n Lee connecting variant there's also a Josh Kassara Venom Island variant. Yeah, and you know, the, the more time to cover art, I have to say that I absolutely love those Mark Brooks covers. Whenever he jumps on a run and does cover A's, it kind of gives the, the whole series an elevated appeal. This is one of those series, Brian, that I am excited to read every month. Uh, it, I, I've been reading this one since the introduction of Star in issue 8. And now we're obviously getting into this whole uh, dark Captain Marvel storyline, as well as the Supreme Vox appearance, um, which is kind of like tying into possibly to Death of Inhuman. So I'm excited for this. Uh, and issue, you know, issue 12 is the one that everybody's anticipating. Um, and issue 13 talks about the death of an Avenger. Now, that may happen in 12, but either way, I, I'm talking about the death of Avenger, this is something I got to pay attention to. So I'm enjoying reading this series. This is one of now my like monthly pulls at this point. Um, and I think that I never thought I would see a day where Captain Marvel would kind of fit into that category, but doing an excellent job on this one. So definitely one we have to highlight right here on the last call show on Simple Men's Comics YouTube channel. So I'm still not on the Captain Marvel, I want to say bandwagon. It's not, it's not the right word, but I'm still not hooked on reading Captain Marvel yet. People keep talking about it, so I'm sure at some point... I will pick this up probably up in trade and see what all the hubbub's about. Everyone's talking about it. But then again, a lot of times I'm late to the party. People were talking about Westworld on HBO for the longest time and I didn't start watching it. And I was like, oh, so this is everyone everyone's talking about. I have a feeling I'll probably be that way with this current run of Captain Marvel. So I'm sure I'll pick it up at some point. Here we are talking Archie Comics with Vampironica New Blood number one. The first Vampironica series came out and it was a great read. So we're coming out with another one, New Blood. This one's going to have five different covers for it. We have an Audrey Mock regular cover. There's a Rebecca Isaacs variant, a Wilfredo Torres variant, a Greg Smallwood variant, as well as a Laura Braga variant. Right now, Vampironica has been one of the hottest Archie characters ever since she first appeared in Betty and Veronica 261. And that back issue is one that if you can even find it, you'll actually see on the back wall at some conventions. Um, you mentioned that first series. It was called Vampironica First Blood. 
it was kind of a reader buzz hit, especially with that Archie crowd. Now, I know like Archie books may not be for everybody, but these darker horror Archie books have found a level of crossover success. So it's something we want to highlight here on The Last Call Show. The next thing that happened was that Vampironica Jughead the Hunger crossover. And this series will spin right out of that. So if you read that one, you're definitely going to want to pick up this one. If you're excited to read this one, you may want to go back and check out that crossover. But either way, we're starting with a brand new arc, and it's called Vampironica New Blood. Right. I've taught before how I've even gotten into comics. I started with Archie way back in the day when my parents told me I needed to read more. But if you're not a fan of those campy, regular Archie type stories, definitely give some of these Archie horror books a try. The Afterlife with Archie, the Jughead the Hunger series by itself, and then he mentioned the, the Jughead Hunger Vampironic crossover. Those are all different takes, a little bit darker like Jack just mentioned. So if you're looking for those type stories, definitely give those a read. And that's also why we have this in this video. Yeah, we talk about it all the time, right, Brian? Horror is hot. So, you know, this is a great example. Even Mugatu thinks so. It's so hot right now. Here we got Batman 84. We've had some good times. We've had some bad times with the Tom King arc. I fully admit, haven't enjoyed the full arc, but I have enjoyed the majority of it. And this one, it's really getting good, especially with that last issue that just came out this week. But we're talking Batman 84 right here. It's got that regular cover, but it's also got that variant by Francesco Mattina. Yeah, and you know, this is one, like I believe the last moment of Tom King's run right here. This is the end of this story. This is part 11 of City of Bane, um, a, a long, sweeping story. And I get what you're saying. There's been moments that disappointed us. Let's be honest, it's just a wedding. And there's been some kind of filler issues. But on the whole, I really have enjoyed this run. I just don't think it matched up to Scott Snyder. Having said that, these last several issues have been amazing. I've really enjoyed this story arc. And this 84 issue, this is one I'm waiting on. Thomas Wayne versus Bruce Wayne, one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano, the battle for the cow. I think this is going to be a great issue. I'm excited. This is one that kind of like I have the hype built up for. And it's been a long time since I, I felt that for Batman. I've been reading the, the series the whole way through, but it hasn't been one that like you're itching to read every month. This one I'm excited for. After eight, after last week's 82, going into 83 and 84, I am ready. Right. We got some people that we talk to on a daily basis that they're like big General Hospital fans. They like that drama. They like that daytime soap opera. This, to me, is my General Hospital right now because where that last issue left off, I, like you said, this is one of the ones in a while where I'm like, I want more and I can't wait to see it. When we get 83 and then 84 coming up as well. And with DC, we get another one of those one-shots, those Tales from the Dark Multiverse. This is the Teen Titans Judas Contract. It takes that normal Judas Contract storyline that we all know and love and totally flips it on its head, doesn't it, Jack? Yeah, that's right. Now, you may remember in the original Judas Contract, it's a Jericho-heavy story, and then Terra is revealed to be kind of like a double agent inside the Teen Titans. In this one, the solicitation says that her betrayal isn't the Teen Titans first, it's actually Deathstroke himself, who she is aligned with in the original Judas Contract. So that's the cool thing about these dark multiverses. They take, they're taking these stories that we all know and love, and they're kind of, like you said, flipping them on the head and giving us kind of a different, darker take. So these have been fun. Reader buzz on these have been kind of split, but it's one I'll definitely be paying attention to. And I know there's a lot of variant buzz out there for that Art Germ Collectibles variant that has kind of a half Raven, half Starfire cover. And you know the Art Germ fans are going to buy that one up. Right, and that's directly from his own site, right? Right, yeah, for, he's selling that himself. I think he's partnered with a couple retailers as well, but you'll be able to get that right off the Art Germ Collectibles website. Get 
getting back over to Marvel, we're talking Spider-Man 2099 number one. We got a lot of 2099 titles coming out. Marvel's really kicking its stride with this 2099, bringing in Alchemax, bringing in Spider-Man, all those other, like all those other one shots for those characters. But most popular one, of course, usually is Spider-Man 2099. And here we are getting another number one issue. Of course, Miguel O'Hara, you know, he's a the kind of shining star of the 2099 program. And in this issue, they're talking about he's a rising star at Alchemax, but his world is about to come crashing down. And obviously, we talked heavy about Alchemax, the company, and what they've got going on with that Venom solicitation last week for Venom 2099, number one. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see with these two books kind of telling the different sides of this story. They say the future of the Marvel Universe is about to die and the world needs a hero. So if you're a Spider-Man 2099 fan, if you're a child of the 90s, if that 1992 series meant something to you, I am sure you are excited for this 2099 revival program. I know I am. I know a lot of people in our Simplements Comics family Patreon group have been heavily checking out those 2099 keys. Pivoting back over to that small press, we're talking about a little Dark Horse book with Kill Whitey Donovan number one. This is like a fantastic story. Remember, Dark Horse has that first look deal with Netflix, so you never know what might happen with this book. But you have the regular cover, but then there's a variant for it as well. Yeah, and I haven't heard Brian get this excited from a Reader Buzz perspective about an independent comic in a while. But he was excited to talk about this one. So I'm going to give you the lowdown on this. This one, we're talking about in order to kill a monster, they'll have to risk becoming one. After Anna Hoyt's sister commits suicide, she sets off for Atlanta to kill the man responsible for destroying her family, her fiancé, Jim Whitey Donovan. But Anna, a spirited, tough, pampered daughter of a prominent doctor, can't do it alone. To get through the hell that lies between Atlanta and Alabama, she makes a deal with one of the Donovan slaves, Hattie Vigil who has an agenda of her own. In exchange for the chance at freedom, Hattie, a survivor, will lead this unlikely quest. I gotta tell you, to me, Brian, this seems almost like a female, like, Django Unchained, right? Exactly. Where we're seeing, we're seeing, like, you know, they've each got their own kind of agenda. It's gonna be violent. It's gonna be graphic. But they're on a mission, and I kind of dig this. And also, it's not like a a female book told through like a man's perspective it's being written by a woman sydney duncan who's actually a novelist yeah i look forward to it i like those period piece books and i like the strong female lead with like looks like a revenge type story so i'm hooked the solicitor already hooked me that's why we have it in this video and i think there's a lot of readers out there that this kind of will appeal to but that's just me let us know in the comments, is this a book that you guys are going to pick up? All right, and keeping it with the indie circuit right now, we are talking about a new book from Mad Cave Studios. We are fans of Mad Cave Studios. We're fans of wrestling. And here we have a Mad Cave wrestling comic book and Over the Ropes. This is written by Jay Sandlin. Normally, you see a lot of books written from Mark London at Mad Cave, but here we have Jay Sandlin, great guy, by the way. Make sure you guys follow him on Twitter. He's active on there. He responds to pretty much everyone, but I'm excited about this book because of all the above. Great writer, great person, great company, great freaking topic when we're talking about wrestling, aren't we, Jack? Right. There's nothing. I'm a big comics fan, okay? But probably my number one passion is professional wrestling. I absolutely love professional wrestling. I watch just about every promotion that there is. So comics that talk about professional wrestling, I get hyped for. And this one, more than any that I've seen, seems to really be written by like a true hardcore wrestling fan like we are, Brian. So this one tells the story of a young wrestler named Phoenix down in the Southern Territories in the 90s. Which, of course, if you know anything about, like, the Attitude Era and kind of that, like, PG-13 to TVMAR rated style of televised wrestling programming, it's that era. And, 
you know, he he takes a match that he's maybe not supposed to win, and it's going to set off some course of events. We're talking families. We're talking factions. Um, we're talking steel chairs and everything in between, crooked wrestling promoters. This is my kind of series. Um, this is, think uh, the Austin era, think the Montreal screw job. Um, we're going to get all of that with this series. And there's been a lot of reader buzz on this. When Brian and I, when we were in Baltimore, and we got to talk to the good folks at Mad Cave Studios, they said that there was more buzz for this than any book. And they're on a roll because Wolvenheart had just set a uh, – a kind of a pre-order sales record for them, and it looks like Over the Ropes is going to pass that. Now, having said that, we're not talking about an overprinted book. We're still talking a micro print run compared to what, say, larger independent publishers and the big two do. But still, Mad Cave Studios is on a roll. This one I'm excited for, as you can tell. And I don't care how well this book does. I don't. This is one I am just pumped to read, but I think it's going to do very well. Get back over to Marvel. We're talking about Immortal Hulk number 28. This one has an Alex Ross cover as well as a Dale Keown 2020 variant. That's going to be the theme through a lot of Marvel books this month. Is it going to have that instead of the Mary Jane variants? They're actually going to have a 2020 variant. But either way, doesn't matter about that. I'm loving the Alex Ross cover. Always love the Alex Ross cover that is on here. And the story's been fantastic. But what's happening in number 28, Jack? Well, are your children normal? Are they respectful of other authority figures? Or do they have a Punisher poster on their wall? Are they angry and discourteous? Do they embrace difficult or dangerous concepts such as protest and the environment? Do they stand with the Hulk? Ask yourself, are your children normal? Or have they joined the teen brigade? So it looks like we are going to get sort of a teen kind of protest team picking the Hulk side in this whole war that is going on between like the Rocks and Corp and Bruce Banner. Um, we get that awesome cover where you see wanted Bruce Banner on it. We get Hulk smash being looks like graffitied by these teenagers wearing Hulk masks. We talked about on the, uh, this, the Bolo show about kind of the comparison with issue 26 and how I mentioned, it reminds me a lot of the Joker movie where people put the Joker mask on because they want to represent the Joker and I compared that to in issue 26, the way we saw people wearing like the green hoodies. Um, and here we get kind of a teen version of that where they're wearing what looks like almost like plastic Halloween masks. Um, this may be a first appearance of this teen brigade. I don't know if that's something of no or of value, but either way, I am excited to read this. I mentioned with Captain Marvel that it's one of those books I pick up every month. And it's not just a book that I pick up and goes into my stack. It's a book that I get excited to read. There probably is no book bigger that I am more amped up to read than Immortal Hulk. It has been a consistent read in the entirety of its run. But I am almost more amped to read this upcoming kind of civil war unrest protest story than I have been kind of like the dark horror Immortal Hulk stuff. So I'm pumped for this issue, and I think that this is kind of like a must get from a reader perspective. Now I'm going to say hold that thought for a second. I know you're saying there's no book you're more excited to read, but let's get to the last book on the FOC and see how you think then. And then the final book that we're going to talk about for Final Order Cut Off this coming Monday is a heavy hitter if I've seen one, especially from that reader buzz. We're talking about Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. This is a crossover that I'm super excited about. And I know Jack is because he's a huge Power Rangers fan and a Ninja Turtle fan. But this is also going to have a, quite a few different covers. There's like eight covers for this. One, you're going to have a cover for each turtle slash Power Ranger, where the turtle's holding the helmet of the Power Ranger. But you're also gonna have that regular cover A, which is a Dan Mora cover. There's a blank cover, but then there's also a Kevin Eastman FOC variant, as well as a one in 50 incentive variant for that Kevin Eastman cover, but it's black and white. Right, so this solicit goes into a lot, but just to kind of give you like the, 
little bit to get you excited. We're talking about the Power Rangers arriving in New York City, finding Tommy Oliver, a.k.a. the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger, and discover him in combat with the Turtles. And this sets off a Power Rangers versus Turtles battle, only to find out that Tommy has aligned himself with Shredder and the Foot Clan. And then they've got to reel from that betrayal and team up with the Ninja Turtles. This is going to be an awesome story. I really like Tommy heel turn stories. Um, whether you're talking kind of like the original introduction of Tommy Oliver, all the way to like the Lord Draken storyline in Shattered Grid, I like those evil versions of Tommy. So this is going to be cool. On top of it, there's so much history here. This is maybe not the most well known thing to like the casual fan, but my hardcore Power Rangers people know this. In a kind of a lesser known show, Power Rangers in Space, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles actually appeared in a crossover episode in live action form. Think similar to what you saw with the original Ninja Turtles movie. So this is not like an out of the blue crossover. Like some people have kind of made it out to be. This There is history here between the Ninja Turtles and the Power Rangers. So this is cool. You mentioned the Goldie Montez variant. Yeah, you're going to see those for every issue with a looks like a different helmet. So issue one, you're getting every turtle with the red ranger helmet. Um, I think issue two has been solicited with the yellow ranger helmet. So I imagine we're going to see that so on and so forth. That is going to be a must put together foil set, a monster set. Um, I'm excited for that. Also, growing up a turtle fan. I think it is so cool to see a Kevin Eastman variant with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on it. I mean, you know, Eastman is so synonymous with the Turtles, and I get excited every time I see him kind of do something else, but especially something else that connects to my childhood. So I loved Eastman when he did that, like, X-Men Wolverine variant. It is so cool to see him do a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers variant. That is an FOC variant, as Brian mentioned. That is one of the reasons why we do this show. That just got announced. Both Brian and I posted it on Instagram today. We're recording this on Thursday. This show is obviously coming to you on Friday. And you have until Monday to make sure you lock in your orders for that Kevin Eastman variant to make sure that you get that book and you're not scrambling on release day trying to find that on shelves. Also, he mentioned that 1 in 50 incentive. That's a big ratio incentive for Boom, something they don't do quite often. That is something to be on the lookout for. Right, so there you have it. Those are the 10 books we like for Final Order Cutoff this coming Monday at 10 p.m. Let us know what books you like that we covered, and if there's books that are hitting Final Order Cutoff that we didn't cover, let us know in the comments as well. Do us a favor, click that thumbs up button, and like we always do at this time, Jack DeMeo, he's going to cover those later printings that we cut coming up, hitting FOC as well. So we've got three late printings solicited this week. First up, we've got Boom Studios coming with the fourth printing of their popular crossover series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel Hellmouth. And from Marvel Comics, we've got Absolute Carnage number four, the second printing Ryan Stegman variant. Also, the very popular Reader Buzz hit book Excalibur number one coming with a second print Kamakoli variant. So there it is. Those are our 10 picks as well as the later printings. If you want to see that full FOC list, it's up right now at simplemanscomics.com. But like you saw at the beginning of this video, Jack has that new Bolo tech service. Right, Jack? Absolutely. We're putting out exclusive bolos through the Bolo text community, linking you and me via text message to your mobile device, coming with daily content coming with announcements and keeping you abreast of what's going on on the channel. So be sure to go ahead and send that text. Let me know. Hit me with that hashtag Bolo Nation at 803-200-2720. And with that being said, I'm going to finish up. I got Florida State here. I was going to pour a little of my Kool-Aid out for Coach Willie Taggart. But that guy just got $17 million. He can get his own Kool-Aid. Good night, guys. <laughs>